we'll get to Jim Harbaugh in just a second. We but first, to. a little Monday Night Football action. Bears, Redskins, Khalil Mack making headaches for everyone named Gruden. You rarely see. Oh, great line, Jenna. I didn't got think that? about that. He all got the, both all Gruden the brothers. Great. Statue of Liberty play run by Case Keenum there. Unfortunately, it was to the outside linebacker for the Chicago Bears. That doesn't work. Mack was a monster again. Yeah, Coach Pagano's got that Bears defense playing lights out. If they can just, do they have a quarterback, Nick? <laughs> On this play, they did. Here we go. Taylor Gabriel pulling off an unreal toe tap. It was ruled incomplete. It was then overturned, and this was a touchdown. Look at that. Just the scraping the pylon makes it a touchdown. They had me on this one. Me and Austin sitting around watching the game. I was like, oh, man, Austin, that's out because his hand came off the ball. It's almost like the Dez Bryant where the catch starts all over. But they were like, no, when it was in his right hand, he still had control. Nice catch. Austin was like, see, I told you. Next, Washington. He didn't say that. He don't like to say that around his stepdaddy. He probably <laughs> told his buddies when he later on. Dude, think he Terry McLaurin rises to make a tough catch across the middle for the touchdown. Boo, Nick? Uh, Terry McLaurin, I'll be honest, I'm not very familiar with his work. However, Chris Carter was. Chris Carter on the old Fox Bet app told America bet him at plus 250 to score a touchdown. Oof. And I'll be damned, I didn't know Washington was going to score any touchdowns. They did. Terry McLaurin had it. Ohio State product catching bunch of touchdowns from Dwayne Haskins in the past, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe some in the By the way, from Indianapolis, a three-star recruit. We developed him. He didn't start at Ohio State. That's how bad we developed him. Now he's starting in the league. Oh. A little <laughs> CFL action. Eskimos taking on Tiger Cats. This is Edmonton's Greg Ellingson holding on. Nice touchdown. Now, this is the Wes Welker. This is the Julian Edelman of the CFL. Dude's had a nice career. Good little athlete plays in the slot. Yeah, Nick. Uh, so he's I want to tell the audience something real quick. Chris's what? son plays in the CFL. Chris yeah, legitimately. And my nephew. Is and a wide his receiver. nephew. Chris watches a lot of CFL football. Chris, not just saying this because it's a white dude wearing number 82 doing no. these things. It's because of how he plays. Yeah, his nickname, his nickname in high school was White Lightning. For real. For real? I think he made that up. On to that one Jim was Any white dude fast is White nickname. Lightning. White Lightning. Yeah, no problem. I got it. Uh, on to Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines on Saturday. They suffered a 35-14 to loss to Wisconsin. Wasn't even that close. At one point, Wisconsin was leading 35 nothing. Naturally, a lot of questions for Harbaugh following that loss. Here's what he had to say to the media yesterday. You know, really from A to Z, it uh, wasn't good, wasn't good enough. And, um, you know, not acceptable. So, starts, starts, uh, Really with uh, not acceptable for me. We didn't play physical enough. Um, we were out hustled. Uh, yeah, I put that, uh, I take responsibility for that. Uh, in any ways that, that um, you know, we were out schemed. Uh, also take responsibility of that. It's my, it's my job to make sure that uh, we're completely sound, not... Uh, not a day we're proud of. So in short, every single thing that went wrong, he's just going to admit to it being his fault. How hot is the seat for Jim Harbaugh right now, CC? I think as far as the national media, it's a talking point. But the people in Michigan, the people making the decisions, the athletic director, I don't believe that he's taking applications. No, I believe he has a lot of confidence in Harbaugh, the board of trustees, these people, the board of regents. These are the people that make these decisions. No, Michigan, this is what they signed up for. When you go back and grab a coach who's had success in the NFL and he's an alumni of your university, you are stuck for a certain period of time. Now it's a matter of how long we're going to be stuck in this predicament we're in. Now, because right now, what is Harbaugh known for? You guys think he's a top five recruiter in the country? He's not. You think he's a motivator? Look at his press conference. He's not. How can you have a hundred college kids and they play without emotion. Man, college football, it's all emotion. So the kids aren't responding to what he's teaching. How can you be out schemed by Wisconsin? You know what they're going to do. <laughs> they got eight fat boys, and they're going to lean on you, and they got a little tailback that they're going to run. The same thing they've been doing the last 20 years. So when you're at a school and you get out physical by Wisconsin, they have better athletes than you, and we know you got good prospects because we see the ratings every year, the recruits you're getting, and we watch the NFL draft. You still got kids that are playing on Sunday, high draft picks, drafted first day, 
on rounds one, round two, and round three. So this is a hardball problem. But for me, the thing that is the most troubling is, from an Office of Innovation standpoint, he's given up the play calling duties. But when he was in San Francisco, he was known for physical offensive line play, the pistol formation he brought from Nevada, mm -hmm. developing a quarterback, and these unbalanced lines. He does none of that at Michigan. So for me, he's a guy that doesn't have any type of identity, let alone the team not have an identity. What is Harbaugh great at right now? He's not calling plays. Their recruiting is not the best. And they're not going to be physical. So for me, I'm, I'm a little lost. But hey, I, I, listen, we got a petition in Columbus, Ohio. We're petitioning to give him an extension. <laughs> we need to keep him. He's got free hospital services. We want to keep him alive and breathing so Ryan Day can pile up some of those wins what? that, that, that our, our guy Urban piled up against him. This has been a disaster. And I was. Why are you so sad, man? Because I don't you, like You would being, think you would have went to school there I or something. I just don't like being wrong. And if the reason this is a little personal for me is my first time ever filling in for one Colin Cowherd years ago when I was first getting on television. I said very triumphantly and defiantly that if you don't tell me if you're coaching high school, college, or pro, you're just going to go coach football. And I can have my number one pick of anybody in the world. I'll take Jim Harbaugh. For the next 10 years. For the next 10 so years. So you had a little age I, in there. I, I so had a little Nick age Saban in there. And so, Belichick yeah, and them. Like, but I also, I saw him succeed at Stanford where no one had succeeded. Succeeded. Now David Shaw has succeeded at an even higher level. I saw him succeed at San Francisco. Now, but now in the NFL, his brother was clearly the better coach then and now. And then he and at the time he had gotten to Michigan, and it looked like he was this close because they were this close. Remember to beating Ohio State that fourth down game they ended up losing. Now you look back and you say, what is his best win at Michigan? It's a loss. It's when they came this close to beating Ohio State. Yep. Since he's been at Michigan, this is eighth year, they are the only Power Five school to not win a game as an underdog. Now, they're not underdogs that often, so they don't have as many opportunities, but to have never won a game as an underdog, to have never beaten your rival, to in your last three games against Power Five schools, Ohio State, Florida, and Wisconsin, be outscored 138 to 68, to need overtime to beat Army, to be in a, out of 130 teams, 97th in offense, 97th in rushing, mm -hmm. 99th in passing efficiency, 119th in turnover margin, Joel Klatt said something during the game that I thought Joel, and Joel's never wrong about this stuff, <laughs> I thought he had to be wrong. It was early in the Wisconsin game. He said this is their ninth fumble of the year. I was like, their damn, it's their ninth quarter of the year. Right. They have had nine fumbles. And it, part of that is coaching. You know who doesn't fumble the ball a lot? Alabama. You know who doesn't fumble the ball a lot? Well-coached teams. I, I don't know where it went wrong for Harbaugh because I do think he got the most out of those Niner teams. I do think he got the most out of those Stanford teams. No doubt. But this has been awful. I mean, awful. 40 and 15 at Michigan during, if we're being honest, a bit of a downtime in the Big Ten, aside from Ohio State's extended run of excellence, is unacceptable. I know that he recruits the players, but how much of it is the players, the personnel, and how much of it is the coaching and, and, and what he's doing on Saturdays? Jenna, this is the big difference between college and pro. On Saturday, college, it's the coach's fault. Especially when you're at a big school, a Power Five conference, a national recruiting base, an alumni base, resources that are unlimited, unmatched. No, it's the coach. You have to be able to blame it on the coach. And if the players weren't getting drafted, if they weren't being all Big Ten, if they weren't five and four star recruits, then you could particularly look. But it's college. Typically, the blame goes to the coach. Tim Harbaugh has no one to blame. Now he's not calling plays. So what are you doing? Are you, are you just a lead recruiter? You managing the game again? Like, they need to find some type of an identity. And to me, when you can't develop a quarterback, and you are a former quarterback, that to me was a bigger indictment than losing the games when you're, when you're, you're an underdog or he's one and six against ranked opponents on the road. At some point, you got to win on the road, and at some point, you got to beat a ranked You got to get a signature win. You got to beat your rival or get a signature win or win all the games you're supposed to. You're doing none of the above at Michigan. At Michigan, with the name of Jim Harbaugh, it's listen. I, I was just wrong on him, and it's just in it's Michigan. A they got they got beautiful facilities. They got great uniforms. They're they're a Jordan brand yep. team. But Jim Harbaugh and them khakis, 
it's not playing well with these young kids. Like he thought it was. It was cute when he was showing up at midnight, sitting down playing video games with kids. Not but it's, it, no, it, it's not playing well. All right, we got to take a break. Coming up. Remember but I'm when, happy. Wait, remember when Case Keenum was my guy? Mm -hmm. Got a new guy, Kyle Allen. Can he stay?